Thursday and welcome to vlogmas day seven. I didn't do my calendar but I will do that in a second. I got my chalk pens ready. I'm going to do some chalk on the window there and then the not the kitchen window but the big patio window. So yeah that's the plan. Yeah I've got my Christmas cards. I'm going to do my calendar first but I've got my so these are the cards that I brought. So these ones which I thought were very cute. There's two designs also so and then these ones. I thought they were quite nice. Um, so they're my cards. Uh, I don't know if I'll get them. I might I might do them, but I think I want to make a list of people that I want to do cards for and I can take it off as I've done it. So that's what I think I need to do for that. Uh, yeah, so I have I also decided to not do mini vlogmas anymore. It's really hard to try and do two things at once. And then it's just, it's just extra things for me to do in the evening. So I'm just going to do regular reels because they're a bit more manageable. So yeah, I'm not going to do them anymore. For now, I'm gonna just do my chalk pens. We've got a korma for dinner because we got dinner last night. And then later on, when I close up the video later, I'm just gonna talk about some comments um, that I had from my video not, not yesterday, the day before. Or was it yesterday? It might have been yesterday. <laughs> People have been so kind and helpful in sending information to me and advising me on, on what they think. So I appreciate everything. Honestly, it's really nice to just be able to uh, have like people understand. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to talk later about that one. But for today, we're just going to get on and do a couple of Christmassy things. And yeah, I hope you've had a nice week. I'm going out tomorrow, so today I need to wash my hair, definitely. But yeah, that will be later. <laughs> I've got a couple of screenshots of uh, people's what they've done. So I'm just going to try and do that. But yeah, I will speak to you in a bit. Okay, so... This is kind of what I'm going for. Okay, I've just done one bit and it is, it's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Not like a good drawer, but that was awful. It looks terrible. But I think as well, it's just, it was an awkward place to do it. If I would have been stood up, it would have gone a lot better. I'll show you it later when the lights come on, but <laughs> it's not great. Okay, I did the other side of the window and I just did some like trees and some more bubbles, but one i cannot draw a circle <laughs> it looks more like easter eggs it was really fun to do i really enjoyed doing it uh, yeah i think what i'm gonna do now is go for a shower and wash my hair now then take the dog out then come back and do dinner but anyway i'm gonna go now for a quick shower do hair and yeah i'll speak to you in a bit yeah so i've had a shower and done my hair so that's yeah i'm really pleased because that's now one less thing I have to do later. I'll hopefully do some clay stuff at the weekend because I don't plan to go out at the weekend, but I do next week want to go to a garden centre. Uh, there's a few 
within reasonable distance. So I'd like to go because it always looks so lovely at Christmas. That's the plan next week. Oh, and I also want to do some Christmas baking. I might do that on the weekend also, make some cookies. But yeah, I'll go for now and I'll speak to you in a bit. nine i we had we had dinner i can't remember where i left off we had dinner and it was really nice and then i kind of just slouched around and then i just wash up and then i kind of slouched around some more and now it's half past nine tomorrow i have to get up early and go for blood tests i find it getting up early is so difficult oh so difficult i'm just going to talk more about adhd things because i've had some really really lovely helpful messages and some things come through and um, and honestly i appreciate that so much because it's really hard to find things like just on the internet sometimes like they have basic things but to, to speak to people who really know these things and go through them themselves is much more helpful i'm just before i go into a, one of the messages that i've received because i said i'm just going to do a, a video response because i think it'd be easy for me to talk about it rather than write it the dyslexic side of me i find it really hard to type <laughs> sometimes it's hard to put things into words as well you, you don't know how to explain things and i find that really difficult explaining things sometimes i just kind of yabble on and i don't know if i've made any sense how i felt my whole life is feeling like the odd one out feeling like you don't fit in and and all that sort of thing and and that's definitely every time i'm like when i went to uni not this time but the time before i i really struggle to interact with people and i always i'm always the one sat alone i'm always the one who goes to lunch by myself and when it comes to group work i find it really hard i'm kind of just sitting in the back and i feel like people think i don't want to do stuff and i do do work i do do it but i just find it really hard to interact as a group uh, you, everybody's like doing stuff but I find it really hard so it's been it's been with me for uh, ever since I can remember now when you start to really think about things you think oh my gosh yeah I like the dyslexic side of me like when I was at school and would be in English and you you used to have to read a paragraph or something and it would go around to everybody and I remember when it was getting close to me oh my god I would I would feel so ill like sweaty I'd I'd have all those feelings but I didn't know what it was and I'd feel stupid, like, why can't I do this? And I'd have to do it, but I would be really slow. And, and, you, and I know that I, I, and I felt like people probably just thought I was stupid. I always feel like I'm stupid. And, and it wasn't until my 30s that I was diagnosed with dyslexia. So I'd struggled all through school. Everything was, yeah, really hard. And I got to the point where I would skip classes, not go to school. I hated it. It was horrible. I didn't really fit in with any of the groups in school. I kind of, again, was a bit of a loner. And yeah, I mean, I had friends, but not really. I found that I, I just like my own company as much as it's lonely sometimes. After receiving some stuff, it just it just kind of makes you think, makes me think even more like, why I can't do so many things and why can't I just get up and go to work and come home, cook dinner and enjoy my evening and sit and watch some TV because I, I can't even go to the cinema because I find it hard to sit at the cinema and, and not be on my phone or do something. The last time I went to cinema, I do sometimes go, not very often, my daughter wanted to go and watch Instella at the cinema because it was at the cinema and I love the film. I thought, okay, I like the film. I know I'm going to enjoy it, so it probably won't be as bad. I felt... I was I, I can't sit near people <laughs> again I have to like I have to sit on an end I have to be able to know that I can go out if I need to uh, that all still plays a part even at the cinema and yes yeah, so we were sat so we had good seats it wasn't it wasn't busy it was quite quite 
empty actually but i i just can't i can't sit still I, even even though i enjoy the film i didn't go on my phone but I, I wouldn't do that at cinema that that that's something I wouldn't do. The only thing I do do on my phone is check the time to see how long I've got left there because I just want to go. I think it's just that being in one spot for a long time, I can't do it. I can't sit there for that long. I need to be, and I do, I just fidget. And, and I know it's probably so annoying, especially to the person sat next to me, which is my daughter. And even at home, I can't focus on it unless it's something. This is why I can't get into TV programs or films unless it really grabs my attention and the last time I watched something that really got my attention was Game of Thrones. I enjoyed that so so much. I loved it. So yeah there's certain shows that really grab my attention and I love that because it doesn't happen often but when I do find something I really love I love it. <laughs> so I've had this uh, comment from a lovely lady that I've I have spoke to before and she says she suspected that I had ADHD as sh as she does and I think, I think, yeah, I think, it, I, cause I don't think, I, I mean, I, I had these, I thought I, I might have it months and months ago and I'd go, like I said, I'd go to see my doctor, but I don't think I'd ever spoke about it. And my life is all over the place, good days, bad days. And I think since I started doing sort of these daily videos, it, it's really helpful for me because it gives me something to focus on. Back to the, the message. Uh, so she says she didn't want to say anything because some people get offended, which, um, yeah, I guess I get, yeah, I honestly wasn't. <laughs> and, and she also mentions that um, Asperger's and what people call high functioning autism uh, because of social anxiety and also depends on whether you understand social cues from people um i do i think i do understand social cues i do yeah that people often think that people who have autism or asperger's so and says that it's like somebody can look quite normal and be quite intelligent and blend into a crowd if they mask mask themselves uh which is draining oh absolutely ADHD is also very common in autistic people and if you happen to have a cluster of disorders like OCD then I would consider getting assessed for that. So yeah that's really helpful to know because um, I do think I might have some OCD also because I don't know if I fully understand what it is so I don't want to say that I have but I don't know if this is a cluster of OCD but like I have a fear of raw chicken. <laughs> I, I eat chicken but I have to use like a knife. I have a special knife and fork which has to be kept alone not near any of my cutlery it has to be kept alone um to cut the chicken and obviously a whole chicken board just for chicken if say i dropped a spoon and it landed somewhere where the chicken was that spoon goes in the bin I, that's there's no that, there's no gonna wash it it's in the bin i've chucked so many things away because of like things that have happened like when i i wash up wash the the chicken stuff in the actual sink not the bowl that i use and again, if something falls in that sink, it's going in the bin. I don't know if that's an OCD thing. I also have a thing about checking doors to the point where I'm surprised I haven't broke a door before because I'm constantly, and I'll, and I'll walk away and I'm like, did I just check it? I have to go back and check it again. And this can go on and on <laughs> for a while. Hair straightening is, is a big one. Oh my gosh. I can be driving down the road and be like, did I turn them? Did I check them? And I sometimes have had to come back and do stuff. Um, I don't know if that, again, I don't know if that's like an OCD. Yeah, it's just, it's just part of me. I, I can't change it. <laughs> there's, no, there's no change in those things. So she also says, this is what I found quite interesting. ADHD can kind of cover up and disguise autistic traits which is also why autism doesn't look obvious in all autistic people for example with adhd you crave newness but with autism you feel the need to have the same routine every day i definitely can relate to both of that like and this is something that you'll probably you if if you've been with me for a while you'll notice i always have to change things in my house i'm going to say the word that i don't like to say i get bored <laughs> i get bored of how a room is, I have to change it around. The kitchen worked up, I have to change it around. Sometimes the cupboards, not always the cupboards, but sometimes the cupboards, like things that I could see daily, I have to change things around. I think that is, is, is a part of me that just is unsettled. I have to have something new. I have to try something different. So that's that, that would be what I think is like something new, um, something different. Um, and then it says with the awesome, you feel the need to, to have the same routine every day but yeah so that's also like because i hate it if my routine is interrupted not so much now but when my daughter if we were getting up at the same time i would have to either get up before her 
like half an hour before her so I could come down and do my stuff because if I can't do my morning routine and it's disturbed I all out of sorts I hate it and when I say my morning routine it's nothing exciting but it's I have to do it it's the same thing every morning every time I have a cup or a drink or something I have to rinse rinse it out I don't know if that's just an, if that, if that's an everyone thing, but that's that's my thing. But if I'm interrupted while I'm doing all that, I hate it. <laughs> but yeah, so I do like my, my same routine. Staying at a job where it's just the same thing every day, as much as I like routines, but I like my home routines, but outside of the house I like a variety of different things, <laughs> if, if you like. And yeah, so in the job front, I found it hard because it was the same. So when I was doing film at uni, I liked it because it was different. It was always something different. When a person has both, they tend to get bored with life, wanting to try something new. But the autistic part of them still needs to keep the same morning routine. Yes, I didn't even read that part yet. And I just explained the whole morning thing. My morning routine cannot be interrupted. And then bless her, she put, I hope that none of this offends you. I'm definitely, definitely not offended. I think the more more you think about it and talk about it, it's uh, it just becomes a bit more clearer as well. But yeah, but no, I definitely didn't take offense. I'm actually really grateful for this. <laughs> because like I said, you can only find so much online. So to have people who experience these things explain it to you is so helpful. So I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful. It, it can also explain your feelings of burnout too, which is common in both ADHD and autism. So I, yeah, I found that really helpful. And I, re like I said, I really, really appreciate just the time that, that it's taken to send me these messages because it's, it's been, I think definitely this year has been probably one of the toughest years in like the mental health side. I said, I mean, obviously I, I have struggled with it on and off my whole life. There's been times where it, it hasn't affected me too much. I've been able to work. I was able to do stuff. The more things I, I read and, and hear stories of, I can relate to. And it's just adding to my list now because yeah, it's, it's just understanding these things and just feeling like it's not you're not alone. I think that's the main thing is feeling like you're not alone. Yeah, I'm gonna go for now and, and again, thank you for everything. Thank you for your messages and advice, help, everything. So thank you for that and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, bye.